Welcome, welcome, welcome to 15 Minute Dot Church, where we love God and we love others as we love ourselves. Praise God, hallelujah, happy Thanksgiving. I'm so glad you're here today. Well, today we've got a Thanksgiving Day message and it's simply entitled, Thank God. Oh yeah, thank God. But before we get into the message, let's have a short prayer, a very short prayer in fact. Our Father, which art in heaven, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for providing water, food, and shelter. Please forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, praise God. I'm so glad you're here today. So let's get right into the message. You know, fans at Kroger Field, the football stadium, they knew this was no ordinary third and long tackle. So when Kentucky sophomore Joe, Josh Pascal stopped a middle Tennessee running back 13 yards short of the first down marker late in the second quarter, the crowd let out this huge roar. <laughs> you feel me? You see, this was Josh's first tackle of the season, you know, because he was diagnosed with a malignant melanoma. You see, Josh's nightmare started after he discovered what he first thought was a blister on the bottom of his foot. You know, and this, he found this out a few weeks before preseason. You know, and, and practice and all that was scheduled to open. Well, the football training staff, they looked at this blister. And they said, whoa, whoa, whoa. They stepped into the doctors to have it checked out. You know, after the doctors looked at this, they did a surgery and removed the blister. You know, and they sent it for tests, you know, lab work. Well, the lab work come back and uh, come back canceled. And they determined that he was going to have to have another surgery and a treatment plan for the cancer. So when Josh went back for his follow-up appointment, they broke the bad news to him. And Josh said, it caught me off guard a lot. But my family, especially my mom and my sister, they wrote up a bunch of scriptures, a whole lot of scriptures, and they put them on my wall. He said, whenever I felt down about it, I just looked up at the wall and I just get my power from God just to keep going through. You see, Josh was baptized just shortly before this diagnosis. And he called on his faith for strength while going through all of this treatment, intravenous immunotherapy treatments every four weeks. See, this went all the way, went lasted all the way throughout the summer. And during the season, his teammates would yell, JP on three, JP on three, <laughs> you feel me? You know, and, uh, you know, and, but while he was going through all of this, you know, he continued. Working out, you know, his upper body, getting his upper body strong while his foot healed and everything. You know, now that he's back on the field and cancer free, I'm told that he hopes that his story can help inspire others going through a similar battle. You see, the Bible says in 1 Peter 1, verses 6 through 7, it says, In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all cancer trials. You see, Josh has already inspired his teammates and many, many others from all walks of life. You see, we all tend to think of cancer as this huge, insurmountable monster. You feel me? And in some ways, that's very, very true. You know, many of us have lost somebody to this terrible disease. It's a word that can strike fear in almost anyone. But with a Holy Spirit perspective, we can realize that this monster named cancer, you know, a very difficult disease that mankind's been unable to conquer. You see, cancer is very, very, very limited in what it can do to us. Oh yeah, and what it can do it to us as children of the living God, amen. You see, Josh says he looks to a higher power for strength and protection on his difficult journey. You see, that's got a lot to do with his faith and his relationship with Christ. Josh says, I'm a Christian. I gave my life to Christ in the spring. So whenever I get scared, I just fall in God's arms for my protection. And my protection comes from God. You see, cancer, it can't cripple love. Cancer can't shed a hope. It can't corrode faith. Cancer can't eat away peace. It can't destroy confidence. Cancer can't kill a friendship. It can't shut out memories. It can't silence courage, invade the soul, and reduce eternal life, or quench the spirit. 
You see, Josh has courage. And that's the quality spirit that enables us to face difficulty without fear. You see, when we think of courage, we often think of war and battlefields and all that. But in the book of Romans 15, 4 says, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So that through endurance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. We should all be thankful that cancer cannot reduce eternal life. You know, if we think about it, if we think about it, eternal life, it doesn't begin at death. It begins when we accept Jesus into our hearts and are born again, amen? You see, when we're born again, cancer can't kill us because we're gonna live forever, amen? That's confidence and courage, family. You see, we're not built for time. Let me say that again. We're, me and you, we're not built for tax, but cancer is built for tax. You see, cancer can follow us into eternal life. That's another thing to be thankful for, you feel me? You see, healing comes into us in various ways. Comes us a lot of different ways. See, some people experience miracles. Some people are given the courage and the strength to endure the situation. You see, but in the word of God, it's got good news. You see, in the book of Matthew 11, 28 through 30, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You see, this is not to say that God, Jesus, will heal every problem immediately. Let me say this again. This is not to say that Jesus will or God will heal every problem immediately. Oh, no, 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 no. Jesus clearly says that we will have trouble in this world. Yeah, let me say that again. Jesus says that we will have trouble in this world, but he can help us through our worst problems. He will help us through our worst problems. You see, one of Josh's teammates said, this was the highlight of my year. He said, you guys know the big picture, but you don't know the little things. He said, seeing JP out there doing his thing, it was unbelievable. He said, that kid, man, has been through so much. Oh, yeah, that's what his teammates said, family. You know, I'm told that Josh was always positive about coming back. They say there was never a negative day that he had. You know, but for the believing in Christ, we can experience something in the midst of our pain and sorrow that the world can't even think about experiencing, family. You see, we're special because the world can't claim this, but as believers, we can. We can experience joy in the midst of any crisis. You see, this answers a whole lot of questions. Like, how can somebody who's terminal lay in the hospital and sing everything? Gonna be all right. Yeah, how can you see that laying in the bed terminal? How can somebody that's going through the pain of divorce jump up and shout, I still have joy? How can somebody who's lost a loved one or a best friend holler out, this joy I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away, you feel me? How can somebody that suffers from a malignant melanoma dare to stand up and say, this is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. You see, we can be in the midst of pain, but we can still have joy. You know, we can be physically hurting, but we can still have joy. We can be mentally exhausted, but we can still have peace of mind. We should all be thankful that in Jesus there's peace. We should all be thankful that in Jesus there's rest. You see, Jesus gives access to the Father. Jesus saves us from God's wrath. Jesus forgives our sins. In Jesus, we have a purpose for living. In Jesus, there's joy. There's victory in Jesus over sin. In Jesus, there's wisdom. In Jesus, we have a place to live forever. The book of John 14, verses 2 through 3 says, My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you that I'm down there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, 